الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته My name is Professor Dr. Yunus Warhi I am attached to the International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance which is basically in charge of uh, conducting research in Islamic finance, especially from the Sharia point of view. Uh, the uh, Islamic finance recently is at the crossroad as the world is facing financial uh, crisis and turning its face to what is known as ethical finance. Islamic finance being ethical in nature is supposed to grab this opportunity and present to itself to the world as a viable, effective, dynamic and robust enough to solve all the problems of the financial crisis nowadays. There is uh, a tendency among regulators to take advantage of the widely accepted Islamic financial products mainly because of their main features, such as the dealing with the real assets, real economy, profit and loss sharing, and what have you. We have seen a trend in many regulators, Morocco, Tunisia, and recently Algeria in North Africa. Even in Central Africa, you have Djibouti, Tanzania, Nigeria, all of them have opened their eye on this new alternative financing industry that is supposed to uh, not only provide alternative to the financial, uh, conventional financial products, but also supposed to provide an ethical system that deals with the clients and all the stakeholders fairly and justly. In, within this respect, the uh, tendency even in the West to forge collaboration with the, with the East in order to so-called benefit from the surplus that exists in the Middle East. We found that some Western countries such as France, Britain, Germany have all devised or uh, designed some uh, instruments in order to get those surpluses which are in the Middle East in order to boost the local economy. The fact is, despite this wide demand for Islamic finance, the challenges for Islamic finance are still, uh, still not resolved or still threatening to say, to say the truth. Islamic finance has not gone within the 2% global share it is still within the global assets are very small. Even though the growth rates are better than conventional, it grows at about 16% uh, annually or per annum, and that is already promising. When it comes to the banking assets, uh, there is a growth, a noticeable growth. Uh, when it comes to Islamic capital market, there is also growth in terms of new products and new markets being uh, introduced. When it comes to the takaful market, it is also growing at a very uh, rebounding, let's say growing at a very uh, fast growth rate. This explains two important things. One is the high demand that we are observing. Third, a uh, second is the uh, the hope that Islamic finance can provide a better ethical framework for uh, financing investment and providing services. When we look into the very basic feature of Islamic finance, which is the real economy or the real assets, the Muslim world is not short of assets or real assets, but it's short of how to really employ those assets into a financial system. Therefore, the Muslim world is uh, encouraged, is basically is urged to use its own resources as the underlying asset for its banking products, Islamic banking products. The second tendency, basically, 
but the second threat basically is when the Islamic banks uh, are seen not really contributing towards the upliftment of the social uh, of, of the living standard of people. Time has come for Islamic banks to play a social role, to have a social economic impact, and to portray themselves to all stakeholders as very inclusive, and that everyone can have a share or can have a share in Islamic banking practices. Alhamdulillah, there are many countries that have felt the need to move into social finance. In Malaysia, for example, the Central Bank of Malaysia has launched a new initiative, which he calls it a new direction of Islamic finance. Um, and he gave it a name, which is Islamic uh, based, or say value based intermediation, and uh, which aims basically to inculcate the objectives of Sharia into the banking sector or in the Islamic finance sector. There is a need basically to add value to the product offered by Islamic finance. Values related to fairness, justice, uh, fair distribution of wealth, creation of wealth, giving opportunity to everybody, the financial inclusion, transparent or transparency in the uh, payment system, and all these areas where Islamic finance is in need of uh, portraying itself in a, in a different way. The world is observing, the world is watching, uh, the world is adopting Islamic finance mainly because it's very pro proposition that promises fairness and justice, profit and loss sharing, uh, dealing with the real economy not with fictitious assets, transfer of, of, of ownership, assumption of risk, transfer of risk, bearing responsibility, no conflict of interest, and after all, uh, establishing or contributing towards a global financial system within a shared value, uh, shared prosperity framework. The shared prosperity framework is a global call where each and every individual of this globe has a right to benefit from financing, whether at macro or micro level. Corporates are invited to invest or to, to explore these shared values and work on them. Uh, individuals are also supposed to take advantage of the Islamic financial system to uh, fulfill their needs uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that uh, uh, make all of them be part of this holistic uh, financial system. In short, the Islamic finance has to portray itself as a valuable uh, system. Uh, it is based on a number of values. Uh, it is based on a number of uh, principles that promises uh, the provision of solutions, but in the same time, it works hand in hand with other financial systems. We hope that the next phase of Islamic finance would be um, uh, a phase where the world would look at it in a very different way, better than the way it is now. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you so much.